Once upon a time, there lived a black cat. The old woman who cared for her called her my lovely daughter, and she lived a very pampered life. One day, after many years, the black cat realized that she could transform herself into a human. Mistress, I have now truly become your daughter, she said, but the old woman did not move. And so, the black cat chased the sparkling lights that flowed up from the old woman's body, across the sea and across the mountains. Wandering and roaming all alone, she strayed into a place inhabited by other monsters like her. It was a foreign land, the demon realm. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be talking about the splendid work of a monster made by Yagata Tanabe. And before we even get into the review part of this video, I just wanna talk about the cover art of this book. And I think it's really, really gorgeous. I love it so much. I love all the colors. It feels like such a Halloween vibe that I personally just wanted to do a review on it for this channel. Continuing on from the intro, Samire, the black cat turned human, ends up under the care of a witch, Mary Ferenacier. In an effort to support her new master in ways that she couldn't with her previous one, Samire takes on the role of a maid, although she ends up being pretty clumsy and struggles to do basic tasks. To help teach Samire how to be a maid, Mary hires two other maids, Rose and Undead and Ivy and Android, although these two appear to have ulterior motives. So Rose and Ivy teach Samire some things, and they actually learn a little bit more about what she's capable of along with her relationship with her master. As it turns out, Samire is capable of seeing magic. After learning that Samire can see magic, Rose entrusts her with a special key that can take the form of a scythe when held. One day, Mary takes Samire into a special room to show her her most special collection. And as it turns out, Mary has had maids in the past that she's kept with her forever by freezing them. Just as she's about to free Samire, Rose and Ivy jump in to save the day. To their surprise, however, Samire actually protects Mary telling them that there has to be some kind of misunderstanding here. Using this opportunity, Mary takes Samire hostage and threatens to hurt her if the two girls try to jump in. Just as all hope seems lost, Rose tells Samire to use the key that she gave her earlier. So Samire grabs the key and it turns into a scythe, just as Rose said it would. Samire swings the scythe at Mary and ends up stealing away her magic. Mary, of course, upset with this betrayal, curses Samire and tells her that she wishes she had never taken her in. And that's when the demon prince, who was presumed to be dead all this time, reappears. Rose and Ivy explain the situation to Samire. Basically, he lost his powers to his younger brother, who had distributed those powers to his subordinates. But now the demon prince is trying to take that magic back, with the help of Rose and Ivy, of course. Samire joins the group, and thus begins her new life with her new family. But yeah, that's pretty much the plot of The Splendid Work of a Monster Maid. I definitely recommend this manga. Honestly, it actually turned out a lot better than I was expecting. I wasn't really sure what to expect at first. I think initially I assumed it was going to be more of an isekai type of story since since Samire technically is from a different land other than the demon realm. I thought there was going to be more about her not really fitting in and being a fish out of water, but that's not really the case. She kind of fits right in since she's a nekomata. Now, the plot of the story, I don't think it's anything super original or something you probably haven't seen before, but it's still good for what it is, I'd say. Now, plot-wise, we obviously don't know a whole lot of details about the story surrounding the Demon Prince, Rose, and Ivy and their relationship and their relationship with the current Demon King. But the premise itself, I think, sets up for interesting stories, I'd say. Because every chapter after the first chapter follows a similar formula where the girls visit a client to help them out with their maid services, but then they end up stealing their magic after doing some searching. Of course, we do get some character moments here and there, but each chapter pretty much follows the same formula which I actually enjoy. Personally, I like episodic adventures kind of like that, where there's not necessarily a long-running plot or each chapter leads into the next. It's kind of just standalone adventures. I think that's fun. Now to talk a bit about the characters, like I said, we don't know a whole lot about the girls. We know, of course, Samire's backstory, but even then we don't know much about the person that originally raised her. But with that being said, the characters are all very likable. They all have a good relationship. No one's really mean. The closest we have to mean is the demon prince. And even he is actually really, I wouldn't say he's necessarily kind. However, he's extremely patient with everybody and he never really gets, he's not mean to the girls. The closest we have to him getting 
getting upset with the girls is just being annoyed by Ivy's antics. And Ivy is, with her personality, it makes sense. Rose is more nurturing and fits the maid archetype a little bit more, or at least she suits the role better than Ivy does, I'd say. In personality, at least. She's extremely kind and considerate and consoling when Sumire actually has to take out the witch that, you know, took care of her for however long. We don't know how long she was living with Mary. And then there's Ivy, who's a bit more spontaneous. She isn't really the nurturing type. In fact, she's actually pretty carefree and a bit selfish. But I think that's a nice contrast to Rose's personality and the Demon Prince's, really. Despite that, though, she also seems a bit oblivious. But in reality, she actually does notice things. And she's also pretty kind. Not in the same way that Rose is, but she's still a nice person. And she does care about everybody else. And then, of course, we have Sumire, who's probably the sweetest one of them all. She just just wants to make people happy because she had such a good life when she was still a cat and she wants to be able to return the favor in the way that she wasn't able to in the past. Samir is probably my favorite character in the story to be honest just because I think her story is really sad. First off she's such a sweet person she has she doesn't have a mean bone in her body but also she doesn't have very many expressions. She's actually pretty expressionless, which I think makes her actually more interesting because you would think just looking at her that she would have a different personality. But yeah, she's kind, she doesn't have a mean bone in her body, and ultimately she just wants to make whoever she's serving happy. And not only that, but she wants to get close with people and she wants to make friends. I'm actually really curious to learn more about her relationship with her mother, I guess. It feels weird to say that, but I want to learn more about their relationship just because I feel like there's just learning about Sumire and her mom is really sad even though we don't know a whole lot about it it's just i feel like she has a bit of a tragic life not really necessarily but the fact that she turned into a human after her mom passed away and she feels sad that she wasn't able to return the favor i don't know it just it gets me i don't know but yeah like i said i really do like this manga i'm definitely gonna get volume two and i definitely recommend it for people and i feel like it has a halloween vibe I think I already said this in the intro, but I just, it fits Halloween so well. Look at these colors and look at this color page. Hold on if I can actually pull it up. Look at this. It's beautiful. But like I said, we don't know a whole lot about the plot of this story and there isn't too many emotional moments if that's what you're looking for but it's an entertaining read and i think it does have some pretty some strong emotional moments at least for me especially with sumire honestly well pretty much just with her but i'm sure as the story goes on we're gonna learn more about ivy and rose and the demon prince and their relationship because right now we really don't know why or we don't know the full extent of their relationship and just why they're serving him or how they came to serve him although i guess in this case it's more like they're working for him because they refer to him as boss i'm not really sure like i said i don't know their relationship ship really. So I'm definitely excited to read more because I want to learn more about this world and these characters. I just really enjoy this story. Also, I will say that even though I said this has kind of a Halloween vibe to it, it feels more spooky cute than like actually scary. So if you want something scary, this is definitely not it. Oh, and you know what? I don't know if I should even mention this at all because it's one of those things that I don't really think about too much. But this story doesn't really have any fan service at all. I feel like a lot of manga, well, not a lot of manga. Actually, I don't know if I can say this for sure at this point, but if you're expecting this to have any fan service or you don't really enjoy any kind of fan service and you would rather just avoid it, this story doesn't have any, at least not in this volume. So I think I lean a little bit more negative towards fan service because sometimes it just gets really creepy. If it's totally not weird or anything at all then I don't really care that much but if it gets to like a creepy level it bothers me but like I said this doesn't really have any so but I guess that's it for this video I don't want to give away too many details on the volume because I don't want to just spoil the whole thing not that there's really any plot details to spoil but I don't want to ruin any of the adventures that you might want to read about so definitely check this out I'm definitely getting volume two and that's I guess that's it for this review thank you guys for watching